What's up on my Power Ass crew? Several months ago, I put a backup camera in an Apollo and I had a commenter say, dude, I'm disappointed. I thought you was gonna put a backup camera and one of these contraptions in a Jeep. I thought, you know what? Backup camera, if I can see my trailer hitch ball, I can back up to my trailer easier. That is a good idea. So guess what we're doing today? I'm gonna show you how it's done. Now the first thing you should do is take your fancy dancy mirror here and go ahead and locate it up here. Because what that's going to do for you is going to allow you to establish your pigtail length coming off here. Pigtail meaning where you can plug in your USB ports, your GPS and all that fun stuff. And so you can neatly tuck your wiring wherever you need to up along through here and down around your dash or whatever you need to do. So what you do is you get these little contraptions out of your box there. You'll hook it here. Then you wrap it around your mirror and hook them on this right here. I'll show you here in just a moment. I can't get my tripod in here, so I'm gonna have to do everything with one hand. And also note to help your mirror, your, your screen here, center better on your mirror, you can take this, move it outward like that to help locate it. You see little rubber bands here have the hook onto it? You got adjustable. You can go from here to the next one to the next one. It just depends on how thick your mirror, your factory mirror is for it to wrap. Pretty easy. Now this is the wire for your backup camera. I kept pulling, trying to separate it out and everything. Kept pulling from right here to here, thinking that step down right there was going to be like the, I don't know, the where it inserted up into the thicker part here. Where it actually separates is right there. So you pull it apart right there. So I can do it with one hand. Okay, let me unplug it, then I'll be right back with you. And see, as you can see there, that's where it separates. You got the little four pins up inside there. This part right here is what's gonna that plugs into your screen, mirror, whatever you want to call it. Then we'll run this harness back the Jeep uh, toward the back of the Jeep. Now, this red wire right here, I'm gonna splice onto that and bring it forward. What that red wire is for. Is to hook onto your reverse lights. Whenever you put your rig, your whenever you put your Jeep in reverse, it powers that wire up right there, which to activate your backup camera. What I want to do, I want to manually activate my backup camera for a couple different reasons. I'm mostly putting this one in here for a test bed for a rust bucket in my play rig because this particular camera does uh, 1080p both front and rear. You know, super high quality video both front and rear. So when I'm out wheeling and Stuff like that, I can use the mirror on um, Rust Bucket to catch some really good uh, footage and stuff. So by manually activating that wire right there, I can flip it back, forward, whatever I want to do to catch cool shots. Instead of relying on my reverse switch to trigger it. And also, whenever I, on this rig, this is my 91, my daily driver rig. On this right here, if I want to back up to my uh, trailer, hook onto the trailer, I can manually flip the switch, which will trigger my backup camera. And I'm going to try to set the camera up to where I can see my trailer hitch ball. That way I can line up with my trailer and not ha having to have somebody to help me back up. And as you see here, I've got my wires plugged in. This is the power. This is your rear backup camera here. And this right here is for the GPS module. The GPS module, I've just got it hanging up here right now because I'm kind of on the fence where I want to put it. Um, I'm really seriously thinking about sticking it right underneath this right here and just keeping my cord nice and neat tied up and tuck it in behind the mirror right here and probably zip tied to those little straps or something because i don't know little voices in my head tell me to keep the gps module up high so that's probably what i'll end up doing it just seems logical to me i guess but if you want to put it under your dash you can do that as well to keep my wires in check keep them all nice neat and tight i got them running through this uh tubing right here and i want to stick it up along the windshield up like this right here i'll be using these things right here to snap that into but one thing I do recommend is because well obviously it's not exactly clean get your paper towel clean it, clean it out for a while then come back with alcohol alcohol and paper towel and wipe that down real well therefore these pads will stick much much better and if you gotta ask what kind of alcohol it's just plain Jane over isopropyl rubbing alcohol like you pick up at the store nothing special it does a wonderful job of cleaning stuff like that they got good that sticking now as you see this corner right here where I pushed it up into the windshield, stuck this one here, 
go ahead and slide this one onto the tubing push that corner up in there and then stick this one it'll kind of hold that up there because also your roll bar is going to kind of keep it there so in the event if you ever need to pull this right here you can always stick one up in there or you can actually stick one up in there now if you wanted to but it'll ride like that you stick that one there before you stick this one push your tubing upward up into that corner right there just stick it it does just fine brought my wiring out there here i tucked it along the dash here now some people say you can cram it back in behind the dash right here make it hot you know hide it completely which you can i'm not pulling that dash out for this just not happening now eventually i'm going to replace that seal right there and when i do that i may consider tucking it in behind the dash but as it stands right now not happening so there's another one of those clips there's another one of those clips it wraps up beneath the dash i got a zip tied underneath there but what's got to happen now here's my wire this is, like I said, this is the camera wire here, and it's got to run all the way along the tub, come right back through here, all the way around through here, go down that hole right there. Then it'll come down through all this right here, come down under this, and come out through here somewhere. Now here's the wire that activates the camera. Typically, this red wire right hooks up to your backup light. So whenever you throw your rig in reverse and you get ready to back up, it activates it turns on your backup lights back there, which energizes this wire, which tells your camera there to say, hey, I need the rear view camera. I want it activated by a switch. So therefore, I soldered, I soldered I heat shrink me a wire to it. And you see the red wire just kind of stringing along through there. But I gotta get all that through this. That's gonna be fun. Let me show you guys a little trick. Now, in most cases on your rig, you're going to have this right here stuck underneath your door. It tucks underneath the door through here, goes in through here, then you got this little bit of a plastic trim right here that you're wiring is run through this. It goes in back and behind here. So, pull my seat forward. Goes in back and behind there, curves up. I'm running my hand up along it right here. Then it kicks over that way. Goes in behind y'all, and then you got more wire loom tucked in all the way through here. Gets right down and runs down through that hole. So I'm going to tuck all my wiring inside that. So for one, I don't have to add another uh, wire loom to the bundle. And two, there's so much room inside this, it'll fit in there with no problems. Underneath here, it's got these little metal tabs. Unfold those tabs, and your harness will pull right out like this. And once you get through running through the loom, you stuff your wire down that hole right there. You just keep eating, keep eating, keep eating it. Eventually, what you you might get lucky enough to see it drop down. But what I end up having to do is go up inside here, find the wire, and then pull it down so it drops down so I can run it across the tailgate now. To activate my backup camera, I've got this cheap little surface mount push button switch here. Came with the uh, like I was wiring harnesses for your LED bars. So it's got the little sticky pad, so I'll pull it off, stick it where I want. But we got three wires. I know which one it is simply because. I fool with these switches enough to kind of know what's going on because you got your uh, LEDs inside here. You LED, the switch itself only needs to complete a circuit. So you only need those two wires to complete the circuit. For your LEDs to work, you need the ground. Black's going to be the ground. So I only need these two wires right here. But if you didn't know that, how would you figure it out? And my dad just left his yellow TJ. Anyway, back to the video. So turn your meter on. You see you got all these different settings. What we're looking for is continuity. So you go from off to here. And you see you got your OL right here. If you touch your leads together, see how it zeroes out the meter? That works. That's all fine dandy and all. But if you want something a little more simple, you got one that's got the continuity tone. Hit select. You hear the beep? That's how you know you got continuity. Continuity means the circuit is complete. It, the circuit makes its trip all the way around everything. So let's just say I don't know what I'm doing here. Which wire is? Let's go for the black to the yellow. 
Get over here, yo. I got nothing. Okay, let's push a button like we're going to turn the switch on. Push. Yellow. Oh, I still got nothing. Okay, let's go to yellow, uh, let's go to black and red. Got nothing. Go black, red again. Still got nothing because why? I don't have tone, okay? Now, let's try, hmm. So I'm being all dramatic here, yeah. Let's go to red and yellow. Red, yellow. Ah, hear that? Hear that? I got tone. Push the button. I don't have tone. Now let's see if my fingers can be contortions for a moment. Put that one there. Oh. I did this a minute ago. I forgot how the heck I did it. Put one here and one here. Okay? That way the wires are touching. Listen real close. That's how That's how I know I've got the right wires for the switch to turn my camera on and off. Now as far as the black wire goes, if I want to hook it up, that will give me ground for my little LEDs to come on, but honestly I couldn't care less about those LEDs. So I'm not even gonna fool with that black wire. I'm just gonna cut it off, get it out of the way, use these two wires right here to complete my circuit to turn my camera on and off. Now let me show you all my favorite way of connecting wires now. See these little things right here? They rock. I should have stuck it there before I stripped that wire back, but hey, it's okay. But you take, slide that through there. Take your wire. Now in the case of the switch right here, we're just completing a circuit. It does not matter which wire you use. So for kicks and giggles, we'll just go red to red and twist the wires together and twist this one then we take our heat shrink slash solder connection and let me grab my heat gun oh there it is right on my nose wasn't it turn it on That's more than just heat shrink. Watch that silver band right there. And there it goes. All done. These new connector, these new heat shrink things I'm using, right there and right there is an adhesive that glues itself to the wire, which makes it super strong, and it keeps water and junk from getting inside there. The silver band that's in the middle right there, what that does is solder. It's super low temp solder. So once it hits a certain temperature, it melts, flows into the wire. So it solders and heat shrinks and glues all at the same time. Those things rock, love them. Now here's the little connectors that I'm using. They come in various different sizes. From big ones, mediums, little ones, little bitty, bitty, bitty ones. Look. Four different sizes, you no know, quantity of each, solder and seal wire connectors. I'll put a link where you guys can go pick this stuff up if you want. But these things right here make life so much easier. It makes building your wiring, whether it be lights or whatever the case may be, it makes them much more reliable. These things are great. Okay, I've been sitting scratching my head trying to figure out what the heck is going on. Because every time, okay, right now, the switch is turned off. I'm a little continuity tester. It does not beep. So, therefore, the circuit is broken. That switch is turned off, okay? I'm going to hook this to the circuit here underneath the dash. That's going to give it power. And what should happen? Nothing. Because this has power, but it has to cycle through that switch to get up to the mirror to activate the backup camera. The little lines that helps you back up and stuff. Uh, with that being said, it's turning on the darn lines and it won't turn off the backup camera as long as it's active, but the switch is turned off. Now, 
like I said, I've been scratching my head trying to figure this out, and I finally hit me as to what's going on. This switch right here has those little LEDs inside of it, okay? What it's doing is the circuit in here that controls those LEDs is putting through just a few little milliamps. I mean, we're just talking minuscule of voltage going through that. It's just enough to trigger the camera to go into backup mode. Okay, let me reach underneath here, plug this wire right here in. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Now, as you can see, it's in backup mode. And it will not come out of backup mode. I don't care if I turn that switch down or on, off, whatever. Because, again, the circuit inside that switch, because it has that little LED inside of it, is feeding through just enough voltage to trigger this thing to kick on. So i got to find just a plain Jane switch with no LED on-off indicator type stuff in it. But see that line right there? When I back up to my trailer, that's going to give me a line right there. I say, okay, I need to go this way, I need to go that way, to hit right off top of the ball, boom, line it up. Now I've got the wire unhooked right now. I unplugged it from the fuse block. Obviously, I don't really need it because I can still come in and back up right there. Come back on. Come back on. And it's, yes, it's touch screens. This mirror is so freaking sweet. Anyway, back on uh, back on the uh, topic here. I can still see my trailer hitch ball right here. What's really cool, I can take and pan this up and down. Now that way I can see you know, what's directly in behind me with traffic, whatever, for if I'm not backing up. If I need to back up to a trailer hitch, to a trailer, I just pan it down a little bit and boom, there's my trailer hitch ball. And right now I've got it set in 1080p. It does 1080p both front and rear. And you see the little coordinates right there? There's my GPS module. So you got GPS built into it. Pretty sweet. Miles per hour. Don't know how fast you're going? It'll tell you right there. So it's 1080p, both front and rear. Both front camera and rear camera will pan like this right here, up and down. The side to side, what it does, it just turns its brightness on up and down. Super, super bright, turn it down. Dims it down, so on, so on, so on. I keep it about midway or so. And here you can you know, stop, start your recording. Uh, flip your camera front, rear. Go boom. Front, rear. Come on. There it goes. And if you want to go into settings mode, hit here. Stop recording. Go into settings. And format your SD card. How much storage space you got. Speed, miles per hour, kilometers, whatever your preference is. GPS status. See? Picking up my sats. Satellites. Back that off. Volume. Set your volume. Motion detection, parking monitor. Screensaver. After 30 seconds of the camera will turn the uh, front rear cameras. We'll turn themselves off and go into just like a regular rear view mirror mode. And see so it goes 30, 60, 90, okay, so. Or if you go into off, you'll stay on camera, should stay on camera mode all the time. Or if you go off, turn the screensaver off, then your camera should stay active all the time. And there's what it does in screensaver mode. It just simply turns up all the camera stuff. Now you're back in rear view mirror mode, basically, just like a typical rear view mirror. The one thing I have to say, if you're like a super crazy perfectionist or something like that, rear view mirror, your stock rear view mirror has a nice reflection. If you see everything uh, cleanly out back. This is still very clean, but you see my little finger paw prints all over it right there. So if you're spastic about stuff like that, that'll drive you nuts. Um, also, the mirror itself, looking just a standard rearview mirror mode with the cameras turned off and stuff, it's got almost like, it's, you would almost think it's got like a window, a window tint or something over it. It's kind of dark. Because you think about this right here is actually a, a monitor screen with a uh, mirrorish tint over top of it or something. Because if you touch it, boom, it kicks back on. 30 seconds from now, it'll shut back off and it'll go back into mirror mode. Like rear, standard rearview mirror mode. Sit here, we'll wait for a moment so you can see it shut down or go into screensaver mode, should I say? I still haven't set my time on that, so that time's definitely not right. And see, there it goes 30 seconds, turns off all the camera functions and all the display functions, goes into like a regular rearview mirror.
this thing is sweet. I do like it. Okay, so I've got my wire run up underneath. Where am I? So I've got my wire run way up, up underneath here. Brought it out here. Got my wire loom right here. So I'm going to put it over top of the plug to you know, protect it from the elements and stuff. I've just got a, a zip tie stuck to it right there because I just wanted to figure out where I wanted to mount it so I could see my trailer hitch ball. So I also I like it right there. It's going to work. I, as you can see from the screen, uh, I think, yeah, I showed you that you can paint it up and down. I'm going to let it ride right there. But what I'll do is probably put some two-sided tape on the back side. It comes with a two-sided tape piece also. Rock y'all. It also comes with the screws too, but for the moment, I'm, I'm just going to put two side tape on it, stick it on a zip tie on each side of it so it doesn't go anywhere. Because I still may play with the locations of it a little bit. Uh, and also, I kind of thought about putting it in rust buckets, so I'm not 100% sure yet. But what I didn't want to do is go ahead and start drilling holes into it and decide I want to move something later. Whenever I feel like I'm 100% happy with this location, then I'll permanently mount it. As far as having that line to guide me back to my trailer hitch ball, Eh, fluff, bells, whistles, whatever you want to call it. Not a big deal to me. I still got the camera in the rear. All I got to do is hit that little button I showed you on the screen. It flips it front and rear. Not a problem. I can see what I need to see. Uh, having the lines there will just give me something to follow as a backup. Again, not a big deal. Just bells and whistles to me. Now, if you want to use that as a backup guide, as in you're backing up in a parking garage or you're backing up whatever the case may be, and you got to have that. One, you'll have to center your camera perfectly, well, I say, say perfectly, within an inch or two, within the middle of the vehicle. Two, take that wire, run it up inside the driver's side of your rig, like where I dropped it down through that hole right there. What you do is get your backup wire that runs your backup light on your tail light, tap that red wire into the, light, into the wire that turns on your backup light. Did I get that clear? Yeah, okay. But again, I want it to be manually controlled from up front, so not a hill of beans a difference to me. But if you're one of those people that are OCD and got to have it perfect, that's what you do. You just take that red wire, tap it to your tail light, your backup light. When you throw it in your rig in reverse, it'll trigger those little lines come up, and it'll guide you to where you need to be. But like I said to me, it's just bells and whistles. I don't care. Which kind of gives me two options. One, I could actually get the right kind of switch that does not have that LEDs to turn on and off because it's back feeding into it, triggering this thing to kick on. I can get a, just a plain Jane rocker or toggle, whatever, make that work. Or I can just say, eh, not worry about it. And I'm gonna, I may cut the switch completely out and not even put it back in, or I may put it in later. I don't know, but you see from the tutorial here that you see how that works. Okay, sweet. You also see from my brainstorming or my issues I was having there, that if you use a switch like I did and you're getting that problem, you know what's up. Now that I've got the opportunity to drive with this thing a little bit in my old bouncy YJ, let me give you guys a few pointers on settings. Touch the screen, touch the screen, there we go. Stop that. Go to settings. Let me zoom in here a little bit for you. Let me get the reflection off there for you. Okay, the screen saver. Gravity sensor. Gravity sensor is something you're going to have to change. Before it was set at middle and high. You know, the, yeah, middle, high, low, off, so on, so on. I had to put it on low because what it kept on doing, every time I would hit a bump on the road, YJs are just, they're not as smooth riding as a JK or your Lexus or your Mercedes or whatever the heck you may want to drive. YJs are just much more rugged. There you go. I'm going to call it rugged. I'm not going to diss much at YJ. What I run into is that every time I hit a bump on the road, and it didn't have to be like a major crater pothole either. What it would do is that impact of hitting the pothole or the imperfection in the road or whatever, it would make it take a snapshot of that current situation. Thinking I just got rear-ended or somebody run over me, whatever, it would save that video file on every single bump, pothole, whatever. So I had to turn the sensitivity down. So I hit low, go back to gravity scissor. I turned it on low right here, and it stopped that. It helped it a lot. So now it would take probably, you know, somebody really, a real impact before it would stop and save that video file as it's recording. And it's on that three minute loop. I think it's on three minutes I've got set on loop recording. 
Yeah, I got to set all three minute loops. So every three minutes, it writes over the, the past file. So therefore, if you was to get into some form of accident, um, you know, rear end collision or some stupid moron wants to try to do a uh, insurance claim and back up into you, claiming that you rear ended them. Well, you got that three minute loop right there, and that thing will stop and freeze that recording loop right there. So for so therefore, you got evidence as to you know them doing something stupid. Uh, I keep my on 1080p just because you got good video quality, and I've got a 32 gig SD card stuffed up here on the top. Audio recording, the audio recording is for inside here, so me running my mouth right now is probably recording it. Date and time, it stays on military time, so you gotta set your time and get used to the military time. Or the 24 hour time, I'm sorry, however you wanna say it. Uh, da -da -da -dun -dun -dun. And of course your language frequency, I got a 60 hertz again, it's the whole video thing to you know, the highest uh, video quality, I guess. Screensaver is how long it stays like uh, right now, if I was to turn it off, I got my cameras on, I'm driving down the road, whatever, and after 30 seconds, it'll turn off this function right here and just default to rear view mirror. <sighs> GPS status. Okay, I got GPS right now, you know, you just, well, for the most part. <sighs> Honestly, I'm not so far a big fan of the GPS feature. No, you don't have Google Maps on this thing to you know, navigate yourself around town or something. What it is, it's just simply running your speedometer. Well, the other day I was sitting here in the driveway tinkering with it, and I was doing 20 miles an hour sitting still. My Jeep is fast, yeah. So, I don't have a whole lot of faith in the GPS thing, and honestly, if I were to buy another one of these, knowing what I know now, I would buy it without the GPS feature. Now, if, you, if your Jeep doesn't have a speedometer whatsoever, you may be okay having that. But, uh, I mean, to me it's not that big a deal. That's, to, that's your call. And I'll build a web page to link this video to and some more information about these different ones. And within those links, too, I'll also provide links to where you guys go check out one if you're interested in it with GPS, without GPS, and so on, so on, so on. This exact model that I'm showing you right here, they have discontinued it. And what I did, I went through all the, the uh, Amazon inventory and found the next closest model that would replace this particular model. So I've actually had this thing for like four or five months before I decided to install it. And uh, so within that period of time, this exact model right here has now been replaced by another one. But again, you know, very good quality ones without the GPS. Now I believe I mentioned earlier in the video that I was going to take the uh, this mirror rig right here and put it in Project Rust Bucket because of the 1080p recording. I don't think I'm going to do that, honestly. And the reason I changed my mind on that is the fact that this mirror is not waterproof. If I were to go, and if I'm out with this, like that, it starts raining or something like that, it's just going to kill it. And any kind of video footage I might want to get off the cameras, I won't be able to do because I'm going to put it up and keep from killing it, you know, because of rain or splashing through a mud hole or something. So with that being said, I've got another rig that you guys have not seen yet. It's going to be my tow pig for a rust bucket and plus pulling my trailer when I'm doing you know, construction work or whatever I have not introduced that particular rig to the channel yet I am gonna put it in it that's where I'm gonna put this mirror at because it would benefit me the most to be able to see my trailer hitch ball to back up to my trailers when hooking up rust bucket or you no know, haul lumber or whatever the case I may need to be doing so it's gonna go on my tow rig I'm not gonna tell you what the tow rig is you'll see it eventually it's a full-size rig and I hate to bust your bubble but it's not a Jeep now to summarize this up, is it cool? It is, absolutely. Is it waterproof? Not at all. Simply because you got all those connections in the top, you got your SD card in the top and all that. If you want to get caught out in the rain, it's done for. But if you are if you want one in your daily driven rig, you know, if it's just a street rig, not out wheeling or anything, it would probably be okay. All you'd have to do is take the little straps off the back of your mirror, unstrap them, unplug your little cords, tie your cords up to the top on the windshield area, just let them hang down there, stick your mirror in your glove box or wherever you want to put it to keep it safe, and you'll be good to go. So in a street rig, it would actually work. You know, just watch out for the weather. That's all I got to say. Now, to you out there that uh, was disappointed, I put it in that Apollo, but I didn't put one in the Jeep. There you go, bro. Done. So everyone, if you enjoyed this video, 
hit me with that thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, and leave me some cool comments down below. And I really, really, really do appreciate you guys hanging out with me. Peace. Later, y'all.